The year is 1983. Gas was about $1.16 a gallon. Ronald Reagan announces the Star Wars project. The Washington Redskins were your Super Bowl champions. And there was the fabled video game crash of 1983. I shouldn't say fabled, it actually happened. In 1983, it didn't feel like there was a video game crash to me. Now, it's true that I had an Atari 2600 for a while. It broke, though. My dad never replaced it. But even still, I saw all these great arcade games all the time. It was during a wonderful era. I wish you could have experienced it if you were born after 83 or don't remember it very well. Because every restaurant, grocery store, gas station, everywhere had at least one or two, sometimes three arcade games. And 1983 was a great year, in my opinion, for some great classic arcade games that are still fun today. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here in this video showcasing 15 amazing arcade games that were made during the crash in 1983. Hot off the release of Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong and Mario get a split ways and come up with their own games in 1983, including Mario Brothers. This game started a lot of trends with Mario. It features Mario and his brother Luigi, both with their own color palettes. It features the notion that you can defeat enemies by bumping them from underneath. Now, of course, in this game, you have to go back up and kick them off the stage, but still. It's the first Mario game that features a POW block. It's also the first Mario game that features coins. Now, in this game, 100 coins does not equal an extra life. However, if you get so many points, I think it's like, you know, 20,000 or something like that, then you'll get an extra life. I forgot what it was, maybe 10,000. It's also the Mario game that establishes Mario as a plumber. Now, in Donkey Kong, he was listed as a carpenter. So this one is a plumber. All this day, several years later, He's a plumber. Good lord, almost 40 years now I think about it. Single screen levels, different enemies along the way as well. Such a fun game. I'm a huge fan of Mario Brothers. Still love playing it today. And this game was made in 1983. Now, as I mentioned, Mario and Donkey Kong parted ways because as Mario went on to do Mario Brothers and then on to doing what he's doing now, Donkey Kong goes off and does Donkey Kong 3, which is like the game that for some reason was made. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I actually like this game quite a bit, but still, it's like, really? Yeah, Donkey Kong's in a greenhouse now, and you play the role as Stanley, who, I, who might be Mario's cousin or something like that. And you have to blast Donkey Kong underneath with your bug spray, I suppose, to get him to leave the stage. And all the meanwhile, you're avoiding these bugs and insects that are trying to not only attack you, but also steal your plants. Very, very creepy when you die because the insects swarm you and basically devour you. This game, when you think about it, plays a little bit more like a like a Space Invaders, maybe even a radar scope if you want to go classic Nintendo. Because the enemies are coming down at you, you have to shoot them from above, but then also you have Donkey Kong to contend with. If he goes all the way down the vine, it's game over for you. But yeah, but both Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong 3 were both made in 1983. Pretty neat. I know my age, but when I learned that Spy Hunter was made in 1983, I was like, oof. I felt that kind of empty, oh, gut feeling. <laughs> Spy Hunter was 1983. Well, Spy Hunter's a classic. It's one of those games that, man, a lot of people either really, really love, or they're just like, man, eh, whatever. And even though that wasn't really English, I'm just like, I, I like it. I do like it. I have a lot of fond memories playing this, especially in the arcade. What I didn't know until literally like over 20 years after playing this game for the first time is you're not supposed to shoot all the cars. <laughs> you're only supposed to get rid of the enemy cars. If you shoot the normal cars, you actually, you stop getting score for a while. So you have to defeat the enemy cars. It's kind of nice because James Bond style, you can go in the back of these trucks and get upgrades as well. There is no end to this game. It's just a high score getter. And even though the controls are a little slippery, especially if you're playing it at home, like on, a, on an NES or something like that, man, I don't know. I still have a lot of fun playing this game. You know, I want to check out Spy Hunter. Again, great game, came out in 1983. One of my absolute favorite arcade games of all time is Tapper. If this game is ever featured at an arcade, I will play it, mandatory, guaranteed. You're serving beer to thirsty patrons and that's it. You just have, you have your taps and you have to shoot them down the way. When they're finished with it, either they're satisfied and they leave or sometimes they'll send the mug back asking for a refill. It gets super hectic after a while in the later levels for sure. It's kind of fun, it always features this mini game too. Let's see if I still got it. There we go. You do have to pick up these mugs as they're being tossed back to you. If they fall off and shatter, that's gonna be a lost life for you. Sometimes they'll tip, and if you run over and grab the tips, it will distract some of the patrons, not all of them. Uh, so that will help you and kind of stall for time to make sure that you get everyone else taken care of. Again, love this game, super hectic. In the arcade, your controller uh, features an actual tap that you pour to, to you know tap the drinks and all that, so that's always cool. And this is the Budweiser version, this is the licensed version. There is also a root beer tapper. Same exact game, just a quick graphic hack.
I love me some Tapper. Like I said, one of my favorite games of all time, and it came out in 1983. What do you know? And although the Tron movie came out in 1982, and there was a Tron arcade game as well, they came out with the, the next one, a sequel, if you will, that's just based only on the discs of Tron. And this one's a lot of fun, too. And I thought it was weird when the Tron arcade game came out, and it didn't feature the discs, which was such an integral part of the original movie, but now there's just a disc game, and, uh, and, and what a fun game it is, too. It's you versus the other player, naturally. And in the later stages, you can hop from platform to platform, but you're all shooting your discs at each other. You can bounce off the walls, maybe ricochet, and you try to hit them or try to knock them off their little beam or something like that. It's a lot of fun and definitely worth checking out. And again, 1983. What a fun year. And what a fun game. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you're subscribed. It really helps out the channel. Thanks. All right, then another classic, another favorite. We got Mappy for you. Classic Namco. You play as this mouse named Mappy, and from what I understand, or from what I figure, you're rescuing all of the stolen items and property, I guess? And it's things like radios. It's things like TVs. It's things like the Mona Lisa. <laughs> but it's just cute and fun. It has a wonderful ragtime soundtrack. I really dig it. You got those trampolines down there, too. You can only bounce on them a few times before they disappear, so if you're planning your strategy, make sure you make that happen. There's doors in your way. If you open them up, you can either knock out the cats or sometimes it'll kind of push them out of the way. Mappy's a whole lot of fun, and I love this game. I just absolutely love it. Wacko is an interesting one. You have your area. And you have doubles of enemies on screen, and you have to shoot both of them in succession for them to disappear, if that makes sense. So, like, you have to shoot one enemy, and then you have to shoot the other of the same type of enemy, and then they disappear. If you don't, well, at least in the first stage, they just kind of get stunned, so you have to, you know, reset yourself and, you know, shoot two in a row. Later stages, if you accidentally shoot a different one, then they swap heads. <laughs> then you have to reshoot the same order to get the heads back in order again, so they're, the enemy is... <laughs> proper again, so then you can shoot the two of them to make them disappear. And sometimes later on, they dis they don't really disappear, they just turn smaller, and then once you clear out all the big enemies, then you have to shoot all the little enemies all at once. If you ever find this in an arcade, you can't miss it, the entire arcade machine is tilted. Well, except that the monitor is proper, but when you look at the top, it's just, it just has this weird slant to the arcade thing. Very unique, very fun. Black was a fun one, I'd recommend it, and again, 1983. Pac and Pal came out in 1983. This is the newest Pac-Man, and for a while there, there was like a new variation of Pac-Man here, there, about every six months to a year, it seemed like, <laughs> a new version of Pac-Man coming out. Pac and Pal is interesting because you have like a friend who's also on the map. Now, you're not eating dots in this one. What it is, is you're basically turning over cards one at a time. And once you do that, it'll unlock whatever's on the other side of the card. Those are the items that you have to pick up. And instead of called Pack and Pal, you do have a friend on stage too. And that person will actually grab the item and bring it closer to you if that'll help you. Still with Pac-Man though, you got the ghosts in the way. Sometimes they speed up, sometimes they slow down, sometimes they stall completely. Uh, it makes it interesting for that gameplay value. It's just another version of Pac-Man, but a fun twist on it. You can check it out. Here's a game called Birdie that many people haven't even heard of. But let me show you a little bit. Now you play this bird trying to feed your baby birds, right? Well, there's these two monsters, I think they're called monster rats or something like that in the game. There's a blue one and a red one, and they're trying to eat the baby bird. So you have to shoo them away. Now, I don't think you can defeat them. Uh, however, you just you pick up the worm one at a time and bring it back to your baby bird. And then when you do that, then you clear the stage. All the meanwhile, you have to shoo these other creatures out of the way because if they get close enough, they will jump and attack, either from, um, from off one of the branches above or even from below, climbing the base of the tree to go straight up and chomp on them. Simple by design, simple by nature, but super fun and super challenging. I, I like this game quite a bit. Hey, how come Satan's Hollow never made it to the NES, huh? You got enemies from above, and there's this river of fire that you need to cross. Now, shooting the enemies from above, uh, take your pick of games that do this. I mean, you can you can take Galaga, Galaxian, Space Invaders to an extent. They're just gonna they're gonna come down and shoot at you, and you just gotta shoot them back, right? But also in the meantime, you're trying to create this bridge to go across and defeat you know these demon things, right? Satan, maybe? I don't know. And then every once in a while this happens, and then he's shooting fire at you, and you gotta shoot him back. But it's fun. It was just another one of those space shooters that were so popular for the time, but with a twist. And Satan's Hollow is awesome. And didn't have a whole lot of games featuring Satan back in the day, so there you go. Traverse USA, sometimes called Zippy Racer or Zippy Race. Um, interesting game. Came out in 83. I liked it because it featured two different gameplay elements for racing. Now you're going cross-country, starting in LA, moving all the way to New York City. Now, uh, nobody in this game can drive. It's one of those racing games where it has lines on the road. Those are just kind of like there for for looks. 
because <laughs> the cars never use their turn lanes. They just kind of go. And of course, you're in a motorcycle, so you crash easily. You can crash as much as you want until your gas runs out, until your fuel runs out. You can get fuel along the way, which is going to help you. But every time you do crash, you lose a chunk of fuel. That's not good for you. And it starts off with this top view looking down. And like I said, I mean, just the other cars are just in your way. And you, if they barely touch you, breathe on you, then you end up crashing. It's terrible. But I thought what was super, super cool was after a while when you started playing this game and when you got far enough to the next city, it would go into that view that would show you the next cities in the horizon. And, they, and now this is the weird part. This is the dumb part. You're driving against traffic. The traffic's coming at you and you're going the opposite direction. <laughs> like, dude, I'm trying to go this way. You're going down the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> so you gotta watch out for those cars that are, you know, <laughs> that are trying to, uh, you know, run you over, it seems like. Pretty neat, pretty fun game for its time. Another game you may not have heard of, here's Mr. TNT. Now you might say it's, you know, maybe a little bit like Pac-Man. There's other kind of arcade games for the time. This one has a unique thing and it's hard to tell at first, but you can really tell later on is when you're traveling along the grid, the grid behind you disappears. So you can only travel on the same line once. And you do have to pick up all these dots, you probably figured that part out already. And there are other dots that are trying to attack you. These are little enemies that are also on the same grid, same lines that you are. Um, they're not making them disappear though, but they are gonna try to track you down and uh, kill you all the same too. Interesting gameplay on this one, and uh, it's just one of those kind of addicting games. Came out in 83, pretty fun to see, pretty fun to look at, and just a new twist where you can, you know, gotta plan your strategy to uh, defeat these things. Yeah, it might be worth checking out. Now here's Minefield from 1983, and shout out to Chris Obreth, because this looks aesthetically pleasing, especially for a game from 1983. The scrolling, the depth, I mean, the land is flat, but what are you gonna do? You're the tank down there, you gotta shoot all the enemies, you can shoot from above, watch out for the mines on below, you can grab more missiles and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's basically the game here, but it just looks super cool. I just wanted to, just wanted to show this off briefly. And because I have them on my II Arcade, this came out in 83. Elevator action, one of my favorites for sure. It's all about riding these elevators up and down. You can shoot these guys, shoot the lights out if you'd like. <laughs> it's a little spy game, but it you know, features elevators everywhere. You gotta take the elevators however you can, you know? Such a fun game. Yeah, gotta go into these red doors too before you leave to uh, grab your top secret evidence before moving on to the next uh, stage here. But elevator action, love this one. Came out in 83. So cool to see. I mean, can't talk about games from 1983 without talking about Dragon's Lair, right? I mean, this game blew everyone's mind when it came out. I was like, it's a cartoon. It's an actual real life interactive cartoon. It's, it's I mean, it's just timed. You just basically have to hit the button when you can. There we go, see, just like that. The rooms are always gonna be random too. I mean, it's gonna be, if you know how the, the rooms work, that's fine. But if you don't do it just fine, then you'll know, figure it out. Where's this gonna lead? Uh oh. Save me. Oh, hit the wrong button. Bad news. I'm here to tell you, thanks to games like these and others later on, I, it may have saved the video game industry, at least here in the United States of America. I've done other videos about arcade games. Make sure you check those out. I would love to see you in the very near future. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll see you soon.